Hey guys, so some very exciting news. Have a new little member of the family that's gonna be joining us, a little crested gecko that I have a deposit down on, haven't picked him up yet. So naturally, I want to make a vivarium for him. Crested geckos like high humidity, they like around like 75% or 70%. A lot of people go with bioactive enclosures for them. And I have a few plants that I have kind of been trying to find new homes for. And I just feel like they would probably do well in here where they can just kind of like grow and do their thing. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna set this new tank up. Now I got this secondhand. I already spent a ton of time cleaning it. It's not perfect. It has some like really intense, like hard water deposits or something like i i've spent so long trying to get it off already that it's just it's not going to be perfect but it'll be it'll be good enough so i'm gonna do a layer of leca on the bottom uh, i don't have that much leca so i'm not sure if i actually have enough a tank like this so this is 18 by 18 by 24 inches that's kind of like the recommended size i guess for like an adult crested gecko so it actually is like a fair amount of volume to fill up. I remember that when I put my frog tank together, like you need more substrate than you would think. So we'll see, it might not be a very big layer of LECA, but anyways, I'm gonna go rinse that now. Okay, so hopefully this view is gonna be okay. Uh, I have basically a bunch of old LECA that I've reused from other projects. It's not like the cleanest or whatever. I just rinsed it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, they're not uniform sizes, but this is just a drainage layer, so it doesn't really matter. And this is all I have right now, so we're gonna use that. I did think I had more, but I don't, I didn't, so anyways. Now, that doesn't even look like enough to cover the bottom, does it? Yeah, see, really you should have like a couple inches or at least an inch. Um, I might just have to go and see what else I can find. Okay, I found like a little bit more Lekka, but I don't really think it's enough. Let's put some of the pretty rocks at the front where we'll see them. I sometimes use Lekka for like the bottom of my cash pot so that they don't, um, if the water kind of like overflows, then it just goes into the Lekka and the roots aren't sitting in water. So I stole some LECA from some of my pots, but this still isn't really as much as I'd like. But it's it's okay. I think as long as I'm, like I could buy some more LECA, but I, I've literally been saving this LECA for like years since I built my vivarium. Like I don't use LECA for very much. I, I don't really prefer it as a planting medium. So kind of the whole point of this project was to use up some stuff that I already have. So I don't really want to go out and buy anything new. So I think that'll just have to be, it'll just have to be good enough. What I'm going to do now is I have some mesh material. I bought some more. I actually bought like a screen replacement kit. So the lid, the top of this, it was like a metal screen and I just, it was very, uh, rusted so I think I did that when I got my frog tank as well as I replaced the screen it's pretty easy to do I've done that with like a few reptile tanks now so I already cut it I already did that I already fixed the screen and now I have some extra and I'm going to oh, use that to just do an, an interface layer between the drainage and the main substrate so I cut it about like that in a square that should be good it doesn't have to be perfect 
got this kit from Amazon and I will leave links for all the products I use. If not the exact ones, then something, you know, equivalent because sometimes things just go out of stock randomly on Amazon. There, yeah, let's see. Mm, okay, it's a little big. And I don't measure anything when I'm doing this kind of stuff. That just, I don't know, takes the fun out of it. <laughs> Ooh, that fits nice, cool. That's pretty good. And once we put the soil on top of that, that's just gonna disappear, so. Next step is to make up the substrate. So the recipe that I use for this soil mix, it's pretty similar to what I talked about in my terrarium video. So the main component is cocoa choir, and then I add worm castings to that. I'm using fir bark, and then I'm also adding some Jeffrey's Hoya mix. They're in about equal measure and I just had to spend a bunch of time chopping up the worm castings and I kind of had to add some more fur bark as I went. I wanted it to be a little more chunky because I know I was planting aeroids in it. Okay, so substrate I did not skimp out on. I know that I need a lot to fill this up. That was a mistake I made when I first built my frog vivarium is I did not have enough substrate. So I filled this entire thing this is uh this was a seed container so it doesn't give me it doesn't give me the volume of this container but needless to say there's a lot in here this is normally what i use to like store my aeroid mix in because it's a nice sturdy container so let's see and if i don't use all of this that's fine i can use it for other stuff If I have to go and make more of this, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Okay, my phone actually stopped recording for a second there, uh, but all I did was fill up this with soil. Um, it could be a little bit more. I do want it to be like filled, but I think if I just add a layer of like sphagnum moss on top maybe, That'll kind of give me the extra, the extra bit. I am going to add some substrate from my isopod bin. I've kind of been using this as like a recycling bin for like, this is a old anthurium stump, but I have a powder orange and a dairy cow in there. Another dairy cow. They really, uh, they're, I mean, they're just amazing recyclers basically. So I'm using them and then there's springtails in here as well. So I'm gonna use some of this uh, substrate to kind of inoculate the soil with some beneficial insects. And if there's old like rotting stuff in here, like it doesn't really matter because the isopods are going to break it down and that's one of the reasons I use so much, uh, so many worm castings in my mix, that was so that the isopods would have something to eat. Maybe I'll just leave that off to the side and just kind of do a scoop. There's lots of charcoal in here as well. This is basically like old terrarium substrate. Nice, I see some isopods crawling around. That's good. I don't want to take all of them out, take all of the substrate out, but. What I'll probably end up doing is any of the old substrate from any of the plants I put in here, I'll end up dumping in here with the isopods, as long as I know it doesn't have like fertilizer in it. And then they can kind of clean it up. Uh, what I should do is put a layer of leaf litter on top as well for the isopods to hide in. But 
I don't think that's, I, I just don't have any at the moment. I usually go and collect oak leaves and then I bake them in the oven. Uh, I think I saw some instructions on some forum on how to, how to do that and like sterilize anything you bring in from the outside just to kill any, you know, foreign critters and stuff. Okay, so the next step is gonna be the hardscaping. So I have some cork pieces and I have this nice piece of wood that my, my mom had it in like more of an aquarium and it kind of started to mold, but I think in here where the, the humidity isn't like quite as high, that'll be fine. So I think I, I, I don't think this is enough to cover the whole background, but I want to use these like natural cork slabs on the back. So I think I will like silicone them in place. I have some, so I have some aquarium silicone that I'll use for that. <laughs> yeah, that's like definitely, definitely not enough. I think it's enough to kind of get started though. And then this piece will be kind of like that. Nice. I grabbed some more random pieces of wood that I have lying around because I really don't want to be, if I am going to be siliconing stuff in, I really don't want to have to worry about that once the gecko is like in here. I have this really cool piece of wood that I haven't really like been able to do anything with. So I'm wondering if this might be the, be the time to use it. Could just give some like nice dimension, you know? And then I, stole some of these from my frog tank. So I'm wondering if I can kind of use that as the main kind of background. This is, I, I had originally bought these with the intention of doing this in my, in my frog tank, but then it ended up that the tank I bought came with, it came with a background already. So then I didn't need to do that. But I think here, if I just kind of, use these for kind of like the adding texture. That actually looks pretty good. That could actually be like a nice little ledge for him to be on. Okay, so I've gone and stolen some pieces of cork out of my frog vivarium. These were never like glued in or anything. I just kind of put them in there to give them these guys something to grow on and that'll actually give this tank a really nice kind of like head start. And then I can just use my other pieces of cork as kind of like accents. So let's, uh, it's like instant instantly bioactive. See, these aren't even attached. They're just attached now with the roots. Plants are ridiculous. So this cork I got a while ago on Amazon as like it was meant to be like a use for like a bulletin board or something. You know what, why don't I just start using some of this silicone to attach these guys. I think this will work. If not, I have, might have to go with something else. <laughs> okay, that'll make this easier. And that's pretty good, just eyeballing it. Okay, well, let's cut this other piece then the same. It doesn't have to be like super secure because Honestly, the plants are gonna end up securing it anyways. I kind of just need something to make it stick. Still looks good. Amazing. I do still wanna use these pieces just for some like texture though. Okay, that's looking like really, really good already. So crested geckos are arboreal geckos, which means they 
like to climb a lot, so I wanna make sure I have lots of stuff for her to climb on. Um, I'm wondering if I should try and, s I just, I don't know if, like I, I kinda wanna make little spots where plants can maybe go. I just don't know if it's really like how necessary it is when I already have the, the so much greenery already. I don't usually use a lot of like silicone and stuff. Like I, I, I kind of like it when things just kind of sit naturally. And I'm undecided whether I want to use this big piece of wood. I've had this for a long time that I've just kind of used as decor, I guess. But it is for like an aquarium. Let's see, I feel like that might just, that might be too much, you know? I don't want it to get overwhelming. I'm just worried if I have like too many different types of wood, it's gonna kind of look not very cohesive, but that would end up being like a good spot to put plants, I think. Ooh, I could stick that piece there. That would look good. I feel like you're almost getting the effect of like tree two trees. Okay, I might have to stick this guy on. Don't know if he'll stay, but we'll try. I didn't use any silicone in my previous build for my frogs but that already had a background that was like good and ready to go. It's not like super secure, but again, everything gets like more secure once the plants like grow in, right? So I don't think we need to go crazy or anything. Oh, hello, little isopod. Sorry, this is your home. That might make a nice little ledge for some plants. Yeah, silicone is not working very well for these. Cork is not like flat, right? So it makes it a little bit more difficult. That looks nice too. And then that would also be a good place to stick some plants, I think. Nice. Okay, I'm actually really liking the way this is coming together. I'm not gonna secure that like just yet. Now this is the main piece of wood I want for like climbing and stuff. How does that look? Okay, that looks really good. All right, yeah, I am very happy with that. Beautiful. Honestly, that doesn't really even need anything else, does it? Is that better? No, because that kind of is mimicking the shape of the background too much. That I think complements it nicely. Cool. I think that looks really good. I'm just gonna secure these a little bit better. Now, it would really be better to use a clear silicone for this, but I did not have that, so. Now, if I was more patient, I would let all the silicone dry for like 24 hours before monkeying around with anything else, but I am impatient and I want to plant some plants in here ASAP. I know I will probably add more on the background later. I think I'm not gonna try and touch any of like those areas, but for some of the like terrestrial plants, like I just kind of have, I just kind of want to plant it, you know, and get it like, get it going. So I'm going to go and wash uh, all the substrate off. Um, also, I'm gonna just like wash the leaves cause I don't really know what I've treated with these, these guys with in the past, all of them. So I'm just gonna use like a plant based cleaner and just basically give all the plants like a really good going over, which is harsh on a lot of plants, but I'm, I think I'm planning on putting a lot of like syngoniums in here. So I know that they can take it, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, sorry, you'll have to bear with me. My phone like stopped recording again because it was out of storage. And I realized there was like 50 gigabytes of stuff in the bin because I was trying to clean stuff out and it didn't actually get deleted. So anyways, I should have checked that, but unfortunately you kind of missed me putting in the plants, which is like the best part. I have a couple more though. I went and grabbed a Skindapsa Silver Lady as well and a little offshoot of a white fusion just to see if he will do okay in here. I've tried to place the taller plants at the back. I'm not too worried about a ground cover right now. I may 
try and introduce some moss and stuff once I know better like what, how the humidity management is gonna be. But for now, I'm not worried too much about what's gonna be uh, on the substrate. probably could add more stuff to this, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna let it grow in the way it is for now. And it'll probably be a few weeks until like editing this video. So I will do an update of how it looks. So update on my tank after a couple weeks. So unfortunately, I kind of just have it sitting on the floor right now. I had a spot where I wanted it to go, but I measured wrong and it ended up not fitting kind of on my stand. So unfortunately, I have to figure out something else for that. But the plants in here, some of them are doing really good. The Syngoniums, not surprisingly are doing really good. The Scandapsis is doing really good. The Pink Splash. Now that one most, I accidentally broke it off when I was washing the roots, but I did plant up the base and the base has a few sprouts on it. So I'm not too worried about that one looking bad. The Breviramosa did die. So I planted my begonia sinbad in here instead. I added a little pink lady, peperomia, the white fusion is still doing good. I added some uh, adansoni Indonesian marble cuttings that I had. Now on the background, a lot of the ficus um, familia has died back. That's kind of what I would expect. This was really ripped away from its root system so a lot of it kind of went crispy right away but it looks like these pieces that are remaining are probably gonna make it and that's fine i've just been kind of misting the background daily and the way this stuff takes over it's like you only really need a small piece to survive and then eventually it'll end up covering the background all by itself so i'm not too worried i added a couple pieces and put them in sphagnum you can see some of them are probably going a little wilty but they're doing okay and then I added a Monstera de Baia cutting that I had in my prop box with um, some of my Epipremnum cuttings that I was treating for thrips. This one was kind of in that same batch. So I'm gonna let that one kind of grow up the wall as well. And then the last thing that I added that I'm really loving the way it looks is this uh, Nepenthes. I am not 100% sure if it'll be okay in here since the humidity usually is around 60%, but uh, so far he's been looking really good. I, I really like the way he looks in that branch. That's a really like nice shot right there. <laughs> so with the Penthes, the really big ones, they can actually, and they do catch mice and stuff. So I might be, um, I might be not wanting to put this in here. It was like a super, super big pitcher plant, but I'm not too worried since Korok is big enough that I don't think he's gonna be ha having to worry about like falling in these pitchers or anything. My frogs, I might, or my morning geckos, I might be a little bit more worried about. I wouldn't be putting those in the frog tank, but anyways, we'll see. This is kind of a wild card that I just added. It's still in its pot, but I just wanted to see how it would do. Oh, I didn't even introduce Korok. He is hiding there in the cork. See him? He blends in really well. So he's obviously very happy in his new home. I added two 
uh, Barina plant lights just kind of diagonally across the top and they seem to be doing really well providing enough uh, light and they also provide a little bit of heat to just keep the top portion of the vivarium just a little bit warmer. I probably will add a basking bulb and probably a UVB specific bulb at some point, but for now I'm pretty happy with how the temperatures and everything have been holding. So yeah, overall pretty pleased with how this setup is going and I will continue to do updates.